Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are. Uh, Good morning. We are. This will be airing, uh, I believe, Tuesday, January sixteenth. So we're mid January. Uh, as we have Excellent. told everybody, we're still we're still in the Christmas mode because we're taping during the Christmas season. So. Our Christmas gets to be shared with our, our listeners up through January. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, we love, we love, of course, you and I, we, and Dan, Linda, we love Christmas. So, uh, we've yes, done, we uh, do. We did, it's we such did. A sweet time of celebration. Just a reminder, you know, uh, that maybe for people that can look at it, you know, for next year again, but that, um, we, we've learned to, to have joy and margin during Christmas. And one of the key ways mm -hmm. is that uh, I know you and Dan do this, Linda and I do this, is that we we you know at the end of November we calendar uh, everything out, yeah, um, so that it it sets the things we are going to do, and probably more importantly, it sets the things we're going to say no to, um, and not right. and not to, because as you're putting it all together. If you just do it one at a time, you tend to just keep adding everything and saying yes to everything. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it's like, man, this is tiring, weary, and we don't have any break and we're not doing right. what and we Right, and you're enjoy. overwhelmed. So what we do Almost, is, yeah. is we, you know, we, we, we basically put together, um, you know, all the things that we would love to do and are typically going to do, you know, with parties and friends and that kind of stuff. Um, and then we just sort them through. And then ultimately it's like... Yeah, we'd like to do that, but we, don't, we really don't have the time. It's going to encroach on our margin. So this year we're going to say no to it. Um, doesn't mean mm -hmm. next year next year might might not come back. But uh, and and we try to do that by the way as how we live life, and that is that uh, once a week we do what's called the calorie activity, and we're always looking for mm -hmm. uh, a couple months ahead. And planning things out in general, but then it has to be become specific to next week uh, mm -hmm. because things change or things come up, and it's like okay, based on what next week looks right. like, what are we going to do in terms of the schedule that we're committing to, including, you uh, and I've um, <laughs> uh, because I have a high capacity for stuff what we call plate spinning. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a good plate spinner. Um, and I'm not super detail oriented. Uh, once in a while I can double book something, um, mm. that, uh, uh, either I didn't put it on my calendar and I accepted something else and I forgot that I had it. But then when we do the week calendar, we look at it, it as like, uh Oh, I've got two things scheduled for Thursday. That's not going to work. <laughs> that's that's not going to work, and I'm going to have to change that, you know. And I got to fix that. Um, and uh, so we're we're in the habit, and it's always it's it's always out of the truth that God says, "I want you to live with margin. You got to be pruned mm -hmm. pruned back. You got to have Sabbath. You got to have rest. You got to have joy." Mm -hmm. uh, and we so learned that that we recognize that uh, and life tends to crowd you uh, so you got to keep reevaluating it and looking mm -hmm. at it and it's both on a what I call a micro level macro level and a micro level so that if things start to get pushed one of the questions is is because of what you're involved in rich is starting to grow uh, like our ministry like there's hey this, this and this is a big year for us mm -hmm. by the way because um uh, We've been we've been placed into a, into a position where uh, there's going to be exponential growth. Uh, well, Linda right. and I, Linda and I can't handle that by ourselves. You 
So you we can't do that all by yourself, no. right? So we have to now, and the board and everybody else said you got to you got to look at getting some assistance, and you know it'll you know there'll be there'll be some funding required, but um, God has that. Don't worry, um, and you got to reshuffle the 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 whole the macro, and then start looking mm-hmm. at the micro, you know, week by week by week, you know. And so and it's a constant thing. Uh, you can't you can't right. ever change it. And then the key is. Uh, as we've been speaking, is you got to you got to hear God's voice that right. that says, "Yeah, you're heading the right direction." No, you haven't got there yet. No, you you need to re- rethink this. Is uh, keep keep going, keep going, keep going. You haven't reached what I call God's sweet spot for us, which is stay in in the joy of life. As you mm-hmm. stay in the joy of life, He said, "You'll be able to give it away, no problem." And I'll show you how to do that. And don't mm-hmm. ever and don't ever think you have to go do anything and quote do it for me. He said it's what I'm going to do through you, um, and I want you to first right. of all to enjoy life. And it's not to be lazy and not to be just self centered. It's but it's to joy have the joy of your marriage or your family of your work. All these things are going to come together. And and by the way, you'll never get you'll never make it to where you've got it settled. It's always going to be dynamic, you know, and so. Yeah, mm-hmm. And I got to show you, I got to show you, I got to show you. And it's, and it's conver- conversation as we've been talking about. Um, and one thing you talked about last time, and I wanted you to share a little bit about the specifics of that, is that you were sitting in church uh, and mm-hmm. God and God spoke a couple things to you. Um, and the question is this, you know, and you can repeat again what he said, but how did you hear that? What did that what did that feel like? Uh, what did that mm. sound like? Because it wasn't that God showed up on the platform and said something to you. Nope. Um, well, what what exactly, when you say, I heard God say, mm-hmm. describe what that looked like and felt like and sounded like as we try to help people understand that. So, you know, you were talking, you, you, right. you explained it last time, but go ahead and explain it again and then give us some some insight there. Yeah. So I was just in church um, a couple Sundays ago, and um, God actually, in my worship time, so the second song of worship, I heard heard the phrase, you can go. Um, It wasn't one of the lyrics. It wasn't something somebody said from the stage. Just like, you know, we talk about God's still small voice. It was just the voice. But yes, did it sound like my voice? Yes, it sounded like my voice. Was it something I would have necessarily said to myself? No, I was in the middle of worshiping. (laughs) But there was this phrase and it caught my attention. You can go. And and I'm and I was, you know, thought for a second, is that you know, what is what is that about? And I knew in that moment, it's his, I don't need to dialogue about him right about it right now, but write it down. And so at the top of my notes that day in quotes, I wrote, you can go. Yeah. And, and l- then l- just continued l- on l- with my l- worship. Let me stop you right there a minute. Um, so that uh, the way that God speaks is first of all, you, uh, it is, a, it is new and insightful and there's something that is spoken and see it's, it's not that you're saying, uh, are you going to talk to me? Are you going to talk to me? Are you going to talk to me? You're just worshiping. You're, in other words, you're living life normally. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden, this thought that is recognizable mm-hmm. that you hear in your inner, inner uh, mm-hmm. system, uh, you can go. Okay, now as you're, Mm -hmm. and and see people hear these things all the time, but what happens is that because it's not either uh, understood or you think, is that just some random thought? We tend Mm -hmm. tend to dismiss it uh, because because you're used to this. And the more that you practice it, the more you're going to get used to it. Um, You heard it you know something about that. Um, mm-hmm. Huh. And I, I know that's how it goes. Huh. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know what it means. I know it's from God. Right. I know that I'm supposed to pay attention. And all I got to do right. is just document that I heard it. That's it. 
Right. Um, because by the way, I can be very forgetful. And yeah. if had I not known, he spoke something, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to write it down so I, I can get back to it later. I truly could be five minutes later and not even remember I heard it. Right. So that's, that's right. you know, for me, I have learned when I hear something, I write it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so as we're, as we are hearing stuff, and that's why I help with people with, well, keep writing down what you're hearing. Uh, and I said, don't even worry. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now, if you, if you, maybe it is a thought of yours, but just write it down uh, mm -hmm. and, and start to realize that God is, <laughs> is saying something and the way he mm -hmm. says it mm -hmm. and the way he guides you is literally step by step by step. It's not dumping the whole thing right. on you or explaining it all up front. It's just, right. Hey, you can go, which is. And I, and I, and again, the way we act with that would be, uh, go where, <laughs> what, you know, what do you, what do you mean? And, <laughs> right? and he'll say, he'll say, honey, just write it. I'll let you know. I don't have an answer for yep. you today I, at the moment, but I do want you to recognize it. Um, mm -hmm. and okay, you did. All right. And so, so you heard it, got in, interrupted. You, right. you, you wrote it down. Okay. Then, then what happened? Right. And then went straight back to worshiping and enjoying that. And then I heard the phrase, start to learn Portuguese. <laughs> and so again, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, that's a really interesting yeah. <laughs> one, especially with my brain. Um, uh -huh. So again, wrote it down and figured, hey, I'll come back and dialogue with him about this later. But and, and again, just describing it's not like somebody said it from the stage. It's not like it was, you know, and, and not that sometimes, you know, to clarify, God does speak through people, yep. other people and something they're speaking. And yep. um, he does speak through song and all of these things. But th this particular time, it was simply these couple of phrases that he dropped and he said, write them down. We'll talk about them later. Yep. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. And, and then he proceeded to unfold the rest of it, which was just incredible that, you know, by the end of the sermon, actually, unbeknownst to me, um, as we shared in the other episode, um, he talked about that there would be an upcoming trip to mission trip to Brazil. Don't know when or what exactly it'll be yet, but that our church has begun this partnership with a community there. And and, um, and it sounds like in the coming years, anyway, there will be an opportunity to go. And it's just so cool that God, yeah. God you know, prepared my heart already to say, hey, this is something that I'm already alerting you to that you're going to be invited to go. Yeah. And, and there's some steps that it may, and I think he knows me too, knowing it would not be, I'm not a quick learn when it comes to a language. So, you know, I'm, I'm fully expectant that he's probably given me a couple years notice here <laughs> because it may take me a while to, to learn the language to the level that he wants me to. Yeah. And that's okay. But yeah. he gave me a heads up and yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you see the difference is that, um, um, I, I spoke basically so that when your pastor says this thing, you know that God's directing you to that. See, if it would have gone the other way. Right. And you're worshiping, right. the pastor stands up, and hey, we're involved in Brazil. Um, just like he could have said, we're involved in, uh, you know, uh, Celebrate Recovery, or we're inv involved in a youth ministry. Anything. yeah. So you wouldn't say, uh, oh, okay, well, I better, get, I better get ready for it. You wouldn't have, you might have thought, right. oh, that's nice. Uh Right. Right. Uh, good. Excellent. I hope, I hope people enjoy that, you know, and, but God said to you ahead of time, I needed to mm -hmm. say something because now when you hear that, so you pay attention, <laughs> the dots start to be connected. And of course, then you just spoke it mm -hmm. yesterday on our podcast and God's been connecting dots for us in Brazil. And then he spoke Lillian. And then it's like, do you see what I'm up to here? I've got Kathy and his, in their church. I've got Lillian mm -hmm. in their church. Mm -hmm. I got you and C12, uh, hey, you guys need to come together at some point and start to mm -hmm. recognize how you're going to work together for my purposes, which, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm going to use abiding as a big piece of this. It's like, oh, mm. okay. So uh, oh, cool. Um, and, and had he not uh, done that already with us, let's say, 
and spoken to us when you just re- re- said that about Brazil, again, my response would be, well, that's nice. And God says, right. it's more than nice. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm, I'm doing? A work what I'm here. Up Pay to? attention. And, hey, by the way, I speak the, I speak Lillian, which you kind of know a little uh-huh. bit what that means, you know, and, uh, huh. Okay. Um, and that's, that's what it sounds like that that's what we're trying to show. Okay. Let's, mm-hmm. let's uh, look at Isaiah 30, 18 to 26. It kind of helps us understand sure. this biblically. Isaiah 30, 18 to 20, okay. 26. It says, Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry when he hears it he will answer you and though the lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore but your eyes shall see your teachers your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left you will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold you will throw them away as an unclean thing and say to them get away. Then he will give you rain for your seed with which you sow the ground and bread of the increase of the earth. And it will be fat and plentiful in that day. Your cattle will feed in large pastures. Likewise, the oxen and the young donkeys that work the ground will eat cured fodder, which has been winnowed with the shovel and fan. There will be on every high mountain and on every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter. When the towers fall, Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold, as the light of seven days in the day of the Lord, in the day that the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, good. That's good. Yeah, yep. that's um, 26. <laughs> yeah, so um, partly as you, as you read the end of that uh, is that um, when I speak to you, I'm leading you to uh, grand things. Um, they're going to be mm-hmm. spectacular. They're going to be for your best. Uh, there's a purpose to it. Um, so keep recognizing that I can make all things work together for good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver the covenant. I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. I'm going to resolve all your issues. You can count on that. Um, so keep remembering where we're headed with this. It's not arbitrary, and I'm not, I'm not doing things to uh, just uh, have you do things that you don't enjoy doing or that don't don't lead anywhere. Um, I'm a loving God and mm-hmm. a caring God and a Father that is bringing you the very very best. Which is, by the way, as you as you hear His voice and experience it, you begin to trust that. Um, because you see it, you mm-hmm. experience it and you don't lose it so that, and I was just talking with a group, uh, this week and they were having lots of difficulties and, and we were talking about hearing God's voice and where do you start? It's called the fear of the Lord, uh, which I believe what he has to say is true. Mm. And I said, now, right. I, I've heard what you guys said. And he says, God says, I want you to start with a truth that I need to reveal to you as true. And that is, I'm going to resolve this. I said, so mm-hmm. as we look at, and, and he talks about how we think and how we process. I said, the way that I just heard everything that you said, and, you, and they all describe these, these difficult mm-hmm. things. I said, my first thought right. is God's going to resolve it. Um, now right. let's, let's go from there. I said, as you experience that, you'll get to the same place no matter what you're facing. Your first thought is going to be, well, God's going to resolve it. Um, I just got to mm-hmm. follow him and hear his voice into it. And I said, the more and more you experience that, which is what God is trying to say here, is that you know, your, your life, your work is going to be abundant. You're, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be spectacular. Uh, trust it. Um, and then he starts out in verse 18 and says, I'm waiting for you. Okay, now mm-hmm. uh, think about what we read last time is if you lack wisdom, uh, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to ask and he'll give it liberally and without reproach. And all you got to do believe is what? 
he's going to speak. I believe it. that he's going to speak. Yeah. Okay. So he yeah. says, he says, I'm waiting. Verse 18 he says, I'm waiting for you to ask me and you to ask me hmm. with a belief that I'm going to speak it. Uh, right. So I, I, I have to, I can't do it any other way. So I'm not going to force mm-hmm. it. I'm not going to force it on you. Um, and if you don't think you can hear my voice, you'll never going to ask me anyway. You'll tell me what you want and what you give me is your prayer list, but you're never asking me for my will. Um, and I can't deliver it to you. Uh, so I'm waiting for you to ask mm-hmm. and to expect I'll answer. And then he says, you wait for me to give you the answer. And by the way, I'm going to do it step mm-hmm. by step by step, which is what you just shared, what happened to you in church. Um, you can go. Right. You didn't say, well, I got to know everything about that. And before I even consider that, mm-hmm. tell me where I'm going, when I'm going, how I'm going to go, what's going to be involved. He just said, uh, you can go. And you said... I'll, mm-hmm. I'll willingly wait. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to come. I'll get answers. Mm-hmm. I'll wait for that to be filled out. And you and I are both right mm-hmm. now in the middle of this thing about Brazil. Uh, we've heard a few things. And the see, we're in a waiting mode of uh, what do you want to show us next? What do you want to show us next? Mm-hmm. I won't jump ahead of you. Um, I'll right. just comes wait. on complete dependence, right? Uh, I'll depend on it. And then he says, if you do that, uh, you won't shove your teacher into a corner. The teacher is himself, the Holy Spirit. Mm. Don't shunt it off as if I can't hear. See, when he's, when you think of shoving something to the corner, it's that I don't, I'm not going to pay any attention to it because it's not that important. He says, mm. he says, yeah. he says, bring it out front and center. Uh, and I will speak to you from behind and tell you what, what does he say there in Isaiah? I'll tell you what, um, this is the way you walk in. Yeah. It, you know. <laughs> Go this way. <laughs> it's very, yep. very, it's very, very specific. And the voice is, is coming from behind and, it, and it's purposely reflected in this imagery because, uh, we tend to look at what do we do going forward? So, um, Mm-hmm. What I can observe, what I can see, what I can analyze, I'll go that way. He says, while you're observing mm-hmm. what's ahead of you and by sight and what you think is a good mm-hmm. I- good idea, he said, that's okay that you're looking at it, but don't rely on it. What I want you to rely right. what I want you to rely on is what I say, and because you're going to have to listen. From, mm-hmm. Because I'm speaking from behind, that's that is is key to hear what I have to say as primary over what you see. Mm-hmm. And so he said, and the picture is here is that uh, if I and I do this in a retreat, I said, hey, if um, uh, here we are in our family room, uh, and um, we have to go around furniture, uh, go down steps, and I'm going to lead you to your car. But I'm going to blindfold you. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you have to rely on? You have to rely on the voice. On my instructions. To listen and to follow. S- stop. Turn right. Mm-hmm. Turn left. S- take a step down. Take a step up. Um, you don't have any other way other than to listen. And he said, I would like you to be mm-hmm. thinking more that way of listening. And I'll direct you. Turn right. Turn left. Take up. Mm-hmm. Stop. Do this. Do that. Um, so that as we're looking at this thing with Brazil that we both heard, um, all we're doing is waiting for the next instruction. Uh, we mm-hmm. don't have to figure anything out. I don't have to observe anything. Okay, I'd better go. It's rather just wait. Right. I'll speak the next instruction. And it'll be turn right, turn left, mm-hmm. do this, do that. It'll be very specific. And it'll be very clear. It'll be my voice mm-hmm. that you'll hear, and then you'll recognize it. And even if you don't quite understand it, that's okay. Right. But now that you heard it, let's get clarity so that you know which way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how it works. And, and, he, and he lays it really clearly out there, is that I'm going to speak, and you've got to be able to hear um, and pay more attention to the speaking than you do to your own thought. Mm, and I got, yeah. I got to recognize it, you know, so it'll be, 
it'll be kind of fun as we keep playing this out, but keep thinking it's not fuzzy, it's not theology, it's not generic, it's not principle, it's very, very clear steps. Let me speak something to you. And, mm-hmm. and the key is, like you heard it in church, you didn't reject it. Okay, right. okay. Um, I heard that. I, I know I heard it. I'm going to write it down. I write it down, pay attention, um, yeah. And I'll wait for the next thing and the next thing because he's up to something. And it was, mm-hmm. it was very, very specific. You're going to go. <laughs> and then he says, <laughs> you know, which, which would have blown your mind. <laughs> uh, hey, I want you to learn Portuguese. Like, huh? Uh, <laughs> what? What? You know, um, I don't get any of that. He said, I know, but you heard what I said. Right? I'll explain mm-hmm. it as it goes, you know, but pay attention, mm-hmm. pay attention. See, if you had rejected the whole thing. Like you said, you could have been even in the service. You could have even forgot it even was said. And, right, when, and, and right. when the pastor said something, it didn't register because you didn't, you didn't, I didn't take note. You yeah. didn't take note, you know, and so that's how it works. So father, we thank you that, uh, you wait for us to, uh, mm-hmm. ask and receive, believe we're going to receive. We're supposed to wait step by step as we understand it. Uh, you said you'll tell us for, by speaking, turn right, turn left, stop, do this, do that. Uh, We'll know that we know that we know. We just have to receive it, realize how beautiful it is, and we'll get to the right spot, which will lead us to the grand, will lead us to the best, will lead us to spectacular. Mm -hmm. Both our experience of it and enjoying the life of the kingdom as being part of the bigger community and your greater work, which is going to be supernatural. So we just pray that we'll we'll experience it, we'll uh, expect it, and we'll start to register when we hear it. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing and thank you for joining us, everyone. If today brought questions up for you, please be sure to send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com and we would love to talk about them and we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments And tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.